Okay, time for another Cinema 4D tutorial, and this time around we're going to be doing some basic compositing. For those of you that don't know what compositing is, we're basically going to be taking some 3D objects and placing them within a 2D image to make it look like they were there when the original image was taken. Now to demonstrate this quickly without having to go through a lot of advanced steps, I'm going to use a very simple image of a parking lot that I found online and there are no obstructions or anything in the way, it's just an empty parking lot on a bright sunny day. So the first thing we want to do is load up the image. Now of course you can use whatever image that uh, you have. Uh, it doesn't have to be a parking lot, it could be anything that you want. I just happen to uh, have this image so uh, I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to go into the color channel. I'm going to go to load image. Okay, so here is the image here and just so you can see it a little better I'm going to right click here on this uh, preview, go to plane, okay there you can see the parking lot. Next thing we want to do is create a background object. Now there's different ways you can do this. You can actually set up a plane to be tied in with your camera, uh, but Cinema 4D has a much quicker way of doing this and that is with the background object. Now we just take our material, drag it over to the background, and there we go. Now the problem here is that our world grid, which is this grid here in the viewport, is not lining up correctly with the perspective in the shot. So what I'm going to do is take the orbit tool up here and I'm just going to move this around. Now we don't have a camera in this scene right now, this is just the default editor camera. So I'm just going to take this around and line this up with this uh, background image. Now you'll notice here, I'm just going to turn this background off for a moment you notice here there's a dotted line that is running across the middle of the viewport. That is the horizon line. So what we want to do is line this horizon up with the horizon in the image. So the horizon seems to be back there uh, just a little below that mountain range in the background so we're just going to line that up. It doesn't have to be perfect for this. I uh, just want to demonstrate the point here. So that looks pretty good. Now the next thing we want to do is create a camera and we can jump into that camera by going to cameras, scene cameras and then you can click on that and you can jump into it that way however for the time being I want to uh, protect this camera from being moved and I'll explain why in just a moment so let's go to Cinema 4D Tags, if you right click on the camera go to Cinema 4D Tags and then we want to jump down here to protection and this is going to protect the camera from being moved uh, or rotated uh, or accidentally being bumped uh, by maybe accidentally grabbing the uh, axis handles for it. So we're still in the editor camera so I'm going to back out now and you can see here that there is our camera. If I turn off the background object we can see it a little better. Okay there's our camera. If you grab a hold of the axis and try to move it you can't. It's not going anywhere. That way it's locked to our shot because if you turn the background back on now you can see the grid is not lined up anymore with our editor camera. However, if we jump into the main camera that we created, everything is still lined up. Alright, so now what we want to do is create a floor object that's going to be used. Now Cinema 4D comes with a standard floor object. The only problem with this floor is that you really cannot make it editable and it goes on beyond what um, what a standard plane might uh, you can create a plane here and there's the width of the plane and if we hit render you can see the plane is showing up there now if I were to delete the plane and use a floor object okay there's the floor it looks like it's only going to be about as big as it's showing up here in the viewport but if you hit render it's showing up way into the background and that's because the floor object is actually acting as an infinite floor so you could actually have this here and go way, you know, have the camera move way off into the distance and the floor will never end. It's just going to keep going. And we really don't want to use that right now. We don't need all that extra space for uh, shadowing. We only just want a very small plane. So let's create a plane and there are way too many height and width segments. So let's take those down to one and one. I'm sorry I did the wrong one there going to hit control Z to undo that and I want the segments here so let's go to one and one there we go that's better 
Now we want to position this closer to the camera, but before we do, we need to take these little, you notice there's a little orange dot here. If you grab a hold of that and drag, you can actually scale this plane in and out. So we want to scale that out some. And then of course we want to drag it down this way as well. And to be honest, we probably don't even need to pull that any closer to the camera. It's actually looking pretty good. All right, what we want to do now is set up the uh, the ratio here for the viewport. So in order to do that, what we need to do is uh, double click the material first and you need to find out what the resolution of your image is. So in this case, mine is 1632 by 1224. So we want to go over here to the output on the render settings and we want to go the width. Mine was 1632 by 1224. All right, that way we've set up the proper ratio here in our viewport. So now since we've got that taken care of, the next thing we want to do is drop in some items. So just to keep things simple here, I'm just going to drop in a cube. And I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. Push it off to the side. I'm going to bring in a sphere. Kind of push that back a little bit. Actually, I think I'm scaling it up and down. Yeah. Okay, push that towards the back. And then maybe we'll drop in something here on the front. Maybe a torus. And what we'll do here... I'm going to jump out of the main camera into the editor camera so we can see this a little better. I'm going to pull it closer to the camera. Go back to the camera. And I'm just going to play around with the radius here and just kind of shrink this down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so here we have three uh, very basic primitives. We really didn't even have to make them editable. You can if you want to, for example, take the cube and just to add a little depth to it, make it editable. Go to polygon mode. I'm going to select the live uh, selection tool here. I'm going to select these two front polys. So I'm just going to hold, uh, you can actually just click this one, hold down shift and select the second one, or you can just click and drag and paint both of those. Going to grab the extrude enter, and I'm going to make sure that preserve groups is off. Going to drag that in. And now we've made two inner extrusions there. Going to go to the extrude tool, and I'm just going to click and drag and extrude those in. Okay, so now we've made two little inner window type uh, extrusions there to give a little depth. So now since we got that set up, now what we want to do is. Uh, provide some lighting for the scene and the reason for that is because if you hit render well, now that's what we've got and that looks rather crappy so we need to actually improve this some because uh, right now we're only using the default uh, auto light so let's throw in some lights in here into the scene so uh, one way you can do this you can use standard spotlights you can use area lights uh, perhaps you already have your own method of lighting a scene or you can use global illumination. So since we're actually doing this with one still image, we're going to use global illumination for this. And to keep things simple, we're going to go with the sky sampler. So in order to use a sky sampler, you have to put a sky in the scene. So let's jump over here to the sky object. There's our sky. Now if we render, our background is no longer showing up. So we need to right click on the sky, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Need to come down here to compositing and we need to deselect the cast shadow receive shadow don't need, don't need any of that and we need to say scene by camera we need to disable that now when we render now the background shows up but the sky is still there so let's create a new material and for this we need to create a gradient and i'm going to do this in the color channel so let's choose gradient and we want to set it to V, 2D V. The bottom color needs to be a bit of a white, and the top color here needs to be a little bit of a bluish color, something to match the blue in the sky there. All right, so we'll throw that over here to the sky. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this here. I'm coming up on the 10 minute limit. So uh, we'll conclude this tutorial in the next part.